In 1640, colonists from New Haven, Connecticut formed the very first European settlement here on the North Shore of Long Island in a village now known as Greenport. Once a whaling and shipbuilding village, Greenport was first known as Winter Harbor. The name was later changed to Sterling after Lord Sterling, which was eventually dropped in favor of Green Hill. But after the town was literally leveled, the town agreed upon Greenport in 1838 when it was incorporated. It later became a transportation hub when the Long Island Railroad laid down tracks from New York. Steam ferries would dock here and take passengers and freight to Connecticut. In fact, right across from the ferry is where you will find the old terminal station, now the home of the East End Museum and Maritime Foundation. It's the perfect place to learn all about this historic village. Being that most of Greenport's tourism stems from maritime activities, a step inside this museum is like stepping back in time. A display on the fishing industry shows how early settlers took a cue from the Indians and used some of their catch to make fertilizer which led to Long Island's rich agricultural industry. In the 1800s, the oyster industry was big business here. By 1860, some 12 million oysters were sold in New York markets. And by 1880, oyster beds were producing 700 million a year. We do have a lighthouse called Bug Light, which is uh, very important to us. And we also have a lot of memorabilia and artifacts here from lighthouses. We have something called a Fennel lens. A lighthouse could be seen from about 12 miles away for a ship, and different lenses reflect the different lights, and that's how the ship would know. So we keep a couple of those lenses here, we have them lit, we tell people about it and how it was to live in a lighthouse 100 years ago. In fact, when you visit the museum, you can also take a boat tour to see some of Long Island's lighthouses. But Bug Lighthouse is the only one you can actually right. set foot on. Wow! This is so cool! For many years, Bug Light guided sailors to safety from its location between Orient Harbor and Gardner's Bay, welcoming them to the protected waters of the Peconic. But more importantly, it served as a warning beacon for navigators rounding the hazardous sandbar at Long Beach. The original structure was burnt down by vandals in 1963, but thanks to a restoration project pioneered by the museum and hundreds of volunteers, it was rebuilt in 1990. When you arrive, you will find Bob Allen inside, whose family ran the lighthouse for decades, starting with his great-grandparents, Ada and William Follett. This is what the original lighthouse looked like. It's a screw pile foundation. It was built in 1871, first lit on December 1st. Screw pile means you got these rods that go into the seabed 10 foot, and then it comes up from here. Legend has it some spirits may still be present here. After a paranormal investigation a few years back, experts believe that Brownie, the lighthouse dog, still walks the grounds. Or maybe it's Bob's father who left school in ninth grade to become the keeper. In fact, upon arrival, our fully charged batteries went dead and the camera would not focus. Spooky indeed. On our visit, we even got special access to climb to the very top. Bob makes the perfect guide, but living in a lighthouse, well, that's a different story. My great-grandmother hated this lighthouse. That was the first time she smiled is when she left this lighthouse, actually. <laughs> Now, the lighthouse tour is not the only way to get your feet wet in history. In fact, if you want to see Greenport in the greenest way possible, you'll want to take a ride on Glory. A 1990 reproduction of an electric 30-foot fantail launch originally built for the 1893 Chicago Expo. Back in the day, J.P. Morgan and the Tsar of Russia each had one. They were produced until the early 1920s, when the inexpensive cost of fossil fuels made electric power uneconomical. But now, Captain Dave Burson has taken it a step further and converted his boat to use the power of the sun. Up until 2008, the batteries were charged the way we charge all our batteries. We plug a plug into the wall and we charge off the grid. In 2008, thanks to a science teacher in this community named Robert Jester, who was doing a project with the kids at Riverhead High School, the kids wanted to turn a business into a totally green business. So they decided they were going to put solar panels up on the roof of Preston's here so that we could get off the grid. What kind of waste are we saving by having this be a totally green vessel? I would say since 2008, and you'll see it on the inverter, I think we have saved more than 41,000 pounds of carbon dioxide being put into the atmosphere. The Nature Conservancy lists Peconic Bay as one of the 10 most beautiful bays left in the world. 
It's a beautiful nursery for oysters, for clams, for porgies, for striped bass, for everything, blue claw crabs. We need to keep this tidal estuary as clean as possible for your children, for my grandchildren.